All right. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for joining us today. My name is Katie Monahan, and I'm a communications strategist here at the Ohio Arts Council. I am a white woman in my late 30s with shoulder length blonde hair, and I'm wearing a black uh, button down shirt. And my background is my office space here at the Ohio Arts Council. And I am really pleased to welcome you to today's webinar. At making an ADAP application is possible with Art Possible. I will introduce our presenters here in just a minute, but before we get started, there are, of course, just a few housekeeping items that we need to go over. So first, everyone tuning in today is in listen-only mode. This just helps to cut down on any feedback issues during the presentation, but that doesn't mean that you can't ask any questions. We encourage you to do so by using the Q&A box there in your control panel. We'll be monitoring those questions throughout the webinar, and we'll be sure to leave plenty of time at the end during the dedicated Q&A session to get to all of them. If you have audio issues or trouble connecting, we recommend refreshing your browser. And if that doesn't work, try logging off and logging back in. And also please keep in mind that because we are presenting from various locations, there may be some variations in internet stability or bandwidth. Um, so if the sound fluctuates or one of us freezes up for a minute, thank you in advance for bearing with us. I promise we will keep on rolling. And next, live captioning is available for today's webinar, and you can access those captions by clicking on the closed captioning icon and selecting show subtitle. And finally, we are recording today's webinar, and that recording will be available on the OAC's webinars page at oac.ohio.gov slash webinars and on our YouTube channel by early next week. All right, I think that does it for housekeeping items. I, I am pleased now to welcome today's presenters. So from the OAC staff, we have Chaz O'Neill, who is our Artist Programs and Percent for Art Coordinator, and from Art Possible Ohio, the statewide service organization on the arts and disability, we have Executive Director Molly Kearney and Director of Programs Megan Feitz. So welcome, Chaz, Molly, and Megan. We are so glad you're here. I'm going to hand things off to Chaz to get us started. Chaz, thanks for being here. The floor is all yours. All right. Thank you, Katie. Thank you, everybody, for joining us today. Uh, my name is Chaz O'Neill, and I am the Artist Programs and Percent for Art Coordinator at the Ohio Arts Council. I'm a male in my late 30s with dark brown hair, a beard, goatee, and I am wearing a uh, tanned uh, button-up shirt. My background is of the also of the OAC offices here in downtown Columbus. My picture is on the right, next to my uh, next to my name, is my title in my email, <clears throat> which is c h a c h a z dot o n e i l at o a c dot o h i o dot g o v, and my phone number is six one four seven two eight. 4421. The picture to my left is of my colleague and director uh, of the artist programs and percent for arts programs, Kathy Signorino. Kathy will join us at the end of the presentation in the question answer portion of this webinar. All right, so let's get started with our agenda. Today we will, we will cover four key topics about the ADAP program. First, I will provide an overview about the grant program and how to find our guidelines and guide you through the definitions of those guidelines. Our friends, Molly and Megan at Art Possible Ohio Services will walk you through the finer practical details about the program and how they can help you apply uh, with your application. After Molly and Megan present, I will jump back on to show you how you can submit your application on your own in the, in the RD system. In the last section of the presentation, I would like to inform you in our broader audience uh, about three other OAC opportunities for individual artists. And finally, at the end, we will take questions. All right, so first, I would like to introduce the highlights of the ADAP program. Uh, the description of the program is, the Artists with Disabilities Access Program, or ADAP, provides funding that gives individual artists with disabilities and organizations that serve them and the resources they need to further their artistic development. Grants are awarded to individual artists at both the emerging artist level, $500, and professional artist level, $1,000, with no match required. 
Organizational applicants may request $1,000 and uh, to $3,000 with a one-to-one -one catch match required. All right, moving on. The next slide will show examples of previous uh, ADAP program award winners. From right to left, the first one on our left is titled Our Plastic World, Three Strikes from the Fire Fish Festival in Lorain, Ohio by artist Ronald Sheldon. The image shows uh, an adult black gentleman surrounded by younger people who are all wearing these kind of fun plastic hats jewelry and exciting clothing and accessories made of upcycled materials. In the middle image is a postcard of a Sonata Number no. 5 project, a Zoom concert and original composition by composer Charles Raymer. The postcard shows a colorful graphic design image and in the center is a photograph of the piano. And the third image on the right is a cover of a children's picture book titled Bully the Pest. A Tick with an Attitude by writer and illustrator Jane Rice. The main image is of a grumpy looking tick dressed as a cowboy standing in the middle of a desert. Moving on, how to find the program guidelines. Think of these program guidelines as instructions. Essentially what is being asked of the applicant and how to uh, submit the materials. But first we need to find the guidelines. So first we will go to the OAC website. That website is, uh, is located at oac.ohio.gov. On the screen, we are showing a screenshot of the OAC website homepage. In the top banner, you can locate the grants tab. When the uh, drop-down menu appears, grants tab, grants info, uh, select grants info and guidelines. On the next screen, you will scroll down to individual artists. On the screen, we are showing a screenshot of that, web, of that web page. There are three PDF icons at the top row and below there are two, there are blue hyperlinks. One of those hyperlinks being individual artists. Once that menu expands, next slide. Once that menu expands, you'll see the list of all the programs that the individual artist's office offers. offers. Scroll down and select the ADAP PDF. On the screen indicated with the blue arrow, we are showing yellow text that reads Artists with Disabilities Access Program in a PDF icon. Please note, you can always contact our office if you would like to have these guidelines emailed or even a paper copy mailed to you. Now that we have the guidelines in front of us, we will now go through and highlight all the key points of the document. We've already covered the description, so let's first talk about the program eligibility. Applicants must be an Ohio resident, exhibited, performed, or published work within the last five years, have a disability per the American with Disabilities Act of 1990. I will read more about that uh, here. Uh, both creative and performing artists who have a disability and are residents of Ohio may apply to this program. The OAC uses this definition of disability contained in section 12102 of the ADA as amended by the ADA, ADA Amendments Act of 2008, which went, went into effect on January 1st, 2009. This act is available online at ada.gov slash p-u-b-s slash ada.htm. Okay, applicants must be at least 18 years old and applicants cannot be a high school student or enrolled in a bachelor or master's seeking program. All right, so what is the difference between an emerging or professional artist. Very briefly, um, here are our legal definitions, but I will let our colleagues at Art, uh, Art Possible cover this more thoroughly in their section. 
Emerging artists have consistently worked in their chosen form for more than three years, have demonstrated strong artistic potential, and want to develop their careers. Professional artists devote a major portion of their time to creating, practicing, performing, or teaching any of the arts. Next, uh, let, uh, let's discuss what is eligible for funding. Funding requests must directly advance the artist's career. In-state travel to attend or present a performance, an exhibition, a conference, a class, or a workshop. They can partake in professional development opportunities, such as a planning process with a consultant or an agent to develop business skills. Rent studio space or art equipment or purchase art supplies. This is probably the most common request. Probably the second most common request is to pay for professional services, such as auxiliary aids or to learn about uh, activities at a deeper or higher level. For organizations, direct activities must advance artists um, with the disabilities in their chosen art form, and equipment purchases cannot exceed $1,000. Moving on to narrative answers plus support materials equal review criteria. These are the core contents of your application and they are two, and these are the two parts. Essentially, panelists will use the review criteria to evaluate your application and support material. Review this checklist in the program guidelines so your proposed project can touch on as many of these points as possible. On the screen, we are showing um, a screenshot basically of that checklist taken directly from the program guidelines. Molly will color, cover this more thoroughly in her section coming up. Next, you will add your support materials, which are uh, your, uh, your images, your bios, your resumes, letters of recommendation. And the image we are showing now is of that checklist copied directly from the guidelines. At the top, it states support materials and it lists all the requirements for emerging artists, professional artists, and organizationals, or organizational applicants. Sorry. All right. So next we will talk about timelines and deadlines. Um, <clears throat> the image on the screen is of a timetable taken directly from the guidelines as well. It has three columns for the year, date, and a task slash deadline. It also has eight rows listing the important dates chronologically. We have two application deadlines annually. May 1st for the one coming up is for activity, activities from July 1st through June 30th. The next deadline is November 1st for activities from January 1st through June 30th. Now, if you are applying for the upcoming May 1st deadline, your panel meeting would take place in July and you would be notified in August whether you were recommended or not. If you cannot get your application together to apply for this coming May, do not worry. You know, we have, we have another app, uh, deadline coming up this year and that's the November 1st deadline. If you apply for the November deadline, your panel meeting would take place in January and you would be notified in February of the following year. Uh, don't worry, we will talk about what a panel meeting is a little later in this presentation. In the event um, that you apply for the May 1st deadline and you receive an award, you are not eligible for the November deadline. You can only receive one ADAP grant per fiscal year. But you can apply for other opportunities, and I will discuss those at the end of the webinar. Okay. So next, I would like to hand off this presentation to our friends at Art Possible Ohio Services, to talk about their organization and how they can assist artists who are applying for this grant. Uh, thank you and let's take it away, Megan. Thank you, Chaz. That was really great and helpful. Hi, my name is Megan Feitz and I am the Director of Programs for Art Possible Ohio. I'm a white woman in her late 30s, pink glasses, short curly brown hair. I'm wearing a dark, um, floral printed blue top and then in the background is like a light switch against a gray wall and partial door. <laughs> Molly, would you like to introduce yourself? Oh, you're muted. 
I was totally muted. Hi, I'm Molly Kearney. I'm the executive director for Art Possible Ohio. Um, I am a white woman in my late 30s. I have shoulder length curly hair. I'm wearing a gray sweater and my background is blurred. Um, I'm gonna turn it back over to Megan and I'll be back with you in just a few slides. Thank you, Molly. So as Chess mentioned, we are Art Possible Ohio. We are the statewide service agency for arts and disability across Ohio. We do lots of fun, great programs, but we also have the honor of providing technical assistance for Ohio Arts Council's ADAP grant. So what we are going to do today is I'm gonna go over a little more of the technical um, aspects of the grant, and then Molly's gonna dig into kind of what makes a good a great grant and give you some hot tips um, to prepare your application so that it can be the most successful grant it can be. Um, our role at Art Possible Ohio concerning the ADAP grant is really very technical. So what we do is we are here for you if you are unable to access the ADAP grant via a smart tablet, phone, or a computer. And what we're going to do is we're going to help you put in all the grant information as well as attachments that you need in order to complete the grant effectively. So first, I'm going to go ahead and... Um, talk about how we can help you, and then I'm going to cover how you can help us. And Katie, if you don't mind going back one, one, one little one slide, um, I do want to mention that uh, Chad talked about the, the deadlines for the grant. The next one coming up is May 1st. If you need technical assistance with Art Possible Ohio, we do ask that you reach out to us before that deadline, about two weeks before, which would be April 15th, so that we have plenty of time to schedule um, a consultation with you, sit down, talk about what you might need for the grant application, um, and then make sure we have plenty of time to input all those materials. The more time we have, the better the grant application is going to be. If you do contact us after that date, we'll do our very best, but it's a guarantee if you um, get in touch with us by April 15th. For that second deadline, November 1st, I believe it was, you would reach out to us about October 15th, October 16th, something like that, um, in order for us to effectively help you. Thanks. Go ahead, Katie. So this slide says, Art Possible Ohio, how can we help in white text? Um, on this slide are lots of little blue icons, which I will describe, and then a list of things that we can help you with. We can assess if you and your project are eligible. And right next to that text, there's a little blue chip mark. So essentially based on the guidelines that Ohio Arts Council provides, um, some of which has already covered and which I'll go into further detail later, we can sit down with you um, and do a consultation. You can present your project to us, tell us a little bit about you as an artist, and we can assess if we think that your project will be eligible for this particular grant application. We can also give you some tips, things to consider um, if it falls short a little bit, and then you can come back with that, back to us and we can reassess things. If there's a question we can't answer, we will either direct you back to Ohio Arts Council or we will reach out to them on your behalf um, and find that answer so that you are ready to go. We can create an Artie account for you. And besides this text is a little icon of a blue computer screen. Now an Artie account is an online web-based um, page that has the ADAP application. Um, so this is Ohio Arts Council's grant um, process. So um, all we're going to need from you for that is a working email and a password, and then we'll be able to get in and we will be able to access that ADAP grant, or we will um, go ahead and set up your account and you can get in yourself and find um, the information you need about the ADAP grant. We can send um, via email or snail mail, a Word document outlining all the grant questions um, that will be needed for the ADAP grant. So that way you have the questions ahead of time. You can um, mull them over in your head, write down answers and things like that before you are sit down and are ready to apply. Um, and the icon for that is a little envelope with a little piece of paper in it representing an email. We can format a simple resume, CV, artist statement, or bio for you. Um, the icon next to that is just a little piece of computer paper. We can format any media files for you. Um, that would be sound files, videos, JPEGs, image files, things like that. The icon next to that text is a little blue folder. 
We can collect letters of recommendation for you. You're gonna need one or two letters depending on the grant level that you apply for. Um, and so those can be sent to us via email or it can be forwarded directly from you. The icon next to that is a little email icon again, which is a little blue envelope with a little piece of paper inside. We can input your grant answers. So if you don't have access to a computer or other device, um, we can set up an appointment with you and directly type your answers into the grant application. The icon next to that is a little blue person. And then we can also, of course, upload any required documents, such as the resume, the letters of recommendation, and any media or sound files that you will need for the grant application. The icon next to that is a little microphone representing a sound file. And then on the bottom quarter of all of our slides is our Art Possible Ohio logo. Thanks, Katie. So, um, to be most successful, there are a few things you can prepare ahead of time um, to increase efficiency um, and improve your, the application process. So this slide says, Art Possible Ohio, how can you help us? Um, before we sit down to um, prepare your application, um, there are a few things that you can have at the ready please provide your RD username and password. So as mentioned before, you're gonna to have to create an RD account if you don't have one. Um, if you do not have an RD account, we can um, create one for you. Like I said, we just need that working email and password. Or if you don't even have a working email address, then Ohio Arts Council can generate a temporary um, email address for you, as well as a temporary password that we will be able to go in and change to any password that you like. This will not create a personal email account for you, but it will allow you to access the RD system or allow us to access the RD system. We will, of course, share that information with you so that you will have it for whenever you might need it. Um, Please have prepared answers to the grant questions. Molly's gonna talk a lot more about the narrative, so don't worry about what those are right this second. Um, but like I said, we can send you that Word document ahead of time, or you can simply log into the system yourself and see what those are. And then what we're gonna need from you is either written or verbal answers. You can email them to us, just plop the answers in an email or a Word document, or we can set up a Zoom or a phone call and you can verbally um, share those answers with us and we'll input them directly into the grant online application. We are gonna need, depending on the level of funding that you apply for, a resume, CV, and or artist statement and bio. So please find those materials and email them to us or be ready to outline your resume and statement verbally. And we will um, for the, format them in a simple manner and be able to upload them to the application for you. Um, some things that artists have done in the past too when they haven't had resume on hand is that perhaps they've created a LinkedIn page or some other sort of professional page, um, like a website and things like that. And they forwarded that to me. And then I'm able to grab the information from those sites and create a simple resume, CV or bio from that. So that's another thing that you can do um, that will support us <clears throat> technically and, um, and make sure that your grant and resume is as professional as can be in advance. Um, you're going to need to have a budget for the grant application, so we're going to need to know what that is. So this is going to be a line item budget, which is simply either a service or a product with a cost next to it, line by line, either um, typed out in an email in a budget document and sent to us, or you're going to have to have that information ready to go um, when we set up that Zoom phone, Zoom or phone call. Um, we're also um, going to need a letter or multiple letters of recommendation from you. So these may be emailed to us from you directly as you receive them, or you are welcome to give the writer of these letters our email addresses, and we will collect the letters for you, let you know the status of their arrival and things like that. Um, just one tip, make sure those letters are current. This is a common mistake I see. Um, people either recycle old letters and forget to change the date, or sometimes artists even use old letters that they have had for other projects. You want this letter to be current, and you also want it to pertain to the grant that you're applying for, and if possible, even the project that you're working on. So make sure you have a conversation with those you ask to write those letters for you. The letters don't have to be very long, just a paragraph or two explaining how they know you, why you're a great artist, and how they believe you will be successful in this project. 
And then we're all, um, please make sure that you have image files, sound files, and other media or required materials ready to send to us via email, an online service like Dropbox, or you can even upload those to a thumb drive or USB drive and send them to us via the mail. Um, USPS is a little iffy these days, so we do prefer um, electronic transfer. Um, but if USB is what you've got, then we will work with you and make sure that we receive those files, um, format them effectively, and upload them to the application. So that's essentially just kind of a long list of things that you need. Don't worry, Ohio Arms Council has that wonderful PDF that outlines all of this very clearly. So you can download off that website or we can send you that Word document that also um, outlines all of these things that you need, or we can have a conversation about it again. Um, Molly now is gonna go more in depth about each of these items, give you some quick and easy tips and reassure you that you can complete this grant application successfully. Thank you. You are muted, I believe, Molly. Thank you, Megan. Um, so this slide says preparing your application um, and we can go ahead and advance. And what I wanna talk about is now sort of the meat of the grant. So, so Megan gave you a really great overview of all of the kind of administrative stuff that you need to have. This is about the actual narrative and getting into um, all of the good stuff that we wanna know about your project. So this slide says Grant Writing 101, and it has a little cartoon on the left that shows a person presenting to a panel of three people. And next to the little person is a whiteboard. Um, and the whiteboard has a uh, piece of paper with some bulleted items. And there's an arrow that points to a question mark. And then from the question mark, another arrow points to another sheet of paper with some bulleted items. And one of the panelists is asking, could you provide us with a little more detail on step two, which is the question mark step. And the cartoon is from freshspectrum.com. And then on the right hand side of this slide, I have four bullet points that I want to address as a sort of overall things you need to keep in mind when you're getting ready and in the process of writing your grant. The first one um, is work ahead. And when I say work ahead, I mean, like Megan said, you want to contact us well in advance of the grant deadline, but grant writing and keeping track of your, the administrative parts of your art is kind of a full-time job. So you should always be thinking about how you can collect documentation, how you can put together um, project ideas and how you can keep records of the art that you've created, the projects that you've done, items for your resume. Um, and the way that I tend to do this is to have a personal website that I keep up to date. And as I make artwork, I photograph it or I scan it and I put it up on the website. But everybody sort of has their own system. Whatever system you come up with that works for you, make sure you keep it up to date. And then when it comes to actually writing the grant, you'll find that instead of having to start from scratch every single time, you can pull together the elements that you've already put together in advance and sort of cobble together something that will work. And then when the next grant comes along, you can repeat that process with newer work. The next piece of advice I have um, says more is more. We hear a lot about writing concisely and writing um, business writing that needs to be short and sweet. But when it comes to this grant application, we would encourage you to explain your project as much as possible. When I was early in my grant writing career, I fell into the trap of assuming that because I was constantly thinking about my project all the time and the work that I was doing all the time, that everybody else was clearly thinking about my stuff all the time. But unfortunately, that's not accurate. Um, not everyone is sort of inside your brain and able to understand exactly what you're talking about. So the ability to explain your project, to put a lot of information in there and information that is clear is really important. Um, my recommendation would be to write as much as you possibly can and then go back in and edit for length and bring it back down. It's always better to have too much information that you can then pare down than it is to have not enough information and leave people wondering what exactly is it that this person is trying to accomplish. Um, one thing I encourage people to do is to present 
the document that you've written or the first draft of your grant, and we can help you with this, to someone who knows absolutely nothing about your project. Um, they're gonna be able to pick up pretty quickly on whether or not your explanation is clear and it makes sense. Um, have them describe back to you based on what you've read, what do you think my project is? And that will really help you find gaps in your explanation. Um, writing matters. So this is really important. If you are someone who is not um, great when it comes to copy editing, like spelling, grammar, run on sentences, um, parallel construction, all of that great stuff that comes with really strong, well-written documents, get someone to help you. Um, the more easily people can read your documents, the more likely they are to get the message that you're trying to get across. One of my favorite tips is to read your writing out loud. So if you're reading what you've written out loud and you get to a sentence where it feels like you're just tripping over your words and it doesn't flow very well, it's going to feel that way when someone reads it silently. So you might wanna go in and fix those sections that just feel kind of clunky or feel like they're not well-written. And then definitely have someone who can edit your work for you. One of the tips that I learned in doing copy editing for museums and galleries is if it's a shorter piece of text, like a paragraph, read it backwards. Go word by word backwards from the last word you've written to the first word you've written. And that will show you if there's any spelling errors and it'll make you look at your writing in such a way that you're not filling in where there might be mistakes because you obviously know what you meant to write. And so sometimes your brain just fills in those mistakes for you. The last piece of advice I have is don't be shy. Let your personality come across. As artists, part of what we do with our art is sell ourselves as an artist, as a personality. And so letting that personality, that vision come through in your grant is really important. And it helps reviewers understand who you are and what your personal mission is. Um, this also goes for organizations. If you are an organization seeking an ADAP grant, don't be shy, toot your horn, tell them why what you do is special and important and deserves to be funded. Um, often we are self-deprecating, we demur, we try not to be too over the top, but this is a situation where you should explain why your work deserves to be funded. If you don't think it deserves to be funded, chances are a panel of reviewers isn't gonna think it deserves to be funded. Um, next slide, please. So now what I'm going to do is go question by question. And a lot of the tips I'm going to give you as I go through the actual program narrative are based on experience that I've had writing grants over the years. I've written lots and lots of grants. I've had a good amount of success writing grants. Um, and I found that the best way to learn how to write grants is to just write grants. And even better is to write grants that don't get funded. Because when grants don't get funded, then you can ask for review notes, you can ask for some explanation on why it didn't get funded, and it helps you hone your practice. Um, so a part of being an artist, being someone who works in non-for-profit and seeks funding like this is rejection. But I highly recommend taking that rejection and learning from it and developing ways to write better grant narratives. So program quality narrative questions. This is worth 30 points. The only thing on this slide is text and our logo. This section of the grant narrative is by far the most heavily weighted. So when you look at the points breakdown, this one has the most points. So if you um, are thinking about where should I dedicate most of my energy in this grant, this would be the place to do it. And these questions are where you really wanna tell your story. So when I was suggesting that more is more and suggesting not to be shy, this is where you really wanna shine. So the first question is, what project do you want to do with this grant? The next question is, why do you want to undertake this project? And the third question is, how will this activity advance your chosen art form? Some writers choose to take these three questions on all at once in one big long um, narrative section. And some people actually answer them one question at a time and sort of break it out. Um, both are totally acceptable. It all depends on how you think and how you like to organize your information. Um, I would 
explain as much as possible what my project is. This could mean a series of artworks that you want to complete. It could mean that you have a series of artworks that you're working your way through and you want to continue that series. If you're an organization, it could be a specific project or partnership that you want to do with the artists that you work with or another organization. Um, but hone in on what the actual body of work or project is. So put some parameters around it, set some goals for yourself and think about specifics um, and then explain it very clearly. Um, things like deadlines that you set for yourself, time frames that you wanna put in there are all really important and they help get across to the reviewers that I mean business. And if I get this funding, I'm gonna use it and I'm gonna use it well. Um, and looking at why you want to undertake the project, this is where you can really talk about your passion as an artist or as an organization. What is your mission? Why does this work matter to you? And why would the funding help push your work forward to the next level? How is it going to advance that chosen art form or advance your the process of the work that you do? Um, and this is where you want to sort of explain when you think about an artist statement, like not just the work itself, but how it fits into the greater context of how you feel about your work. So it's okay to get a little bit personal. It's okay to explain what your ultimate vision is as an artist. Um, biggest advice on this one, write more and pare down later. One of the main things that we see with this grant application is people kind of just don't give us enough detail. Um, think about giving each of these questions a solid paragraph to explain. All right, next slide. Community engagement narrative questions. This section is worth 10 points and it has two questions. And I think this is the one where we run into kind of the most, like, I'm not really sure what this means. So the first question is, how do you market your artwork? And the second question is, how are you involved in the community with your artwork? Um, again, you can answer these questions together or you can split them out and answer them separately. Um, how do you market your artwork? Do you have a social media um, account that you put your artwork on? Do you have an Instagram following? Do you have small shows where you show your work in maybe a coffee shop? Um, do you sell your work through Etsy? Do you sell your work through your website? Explain your process for getting your work out there so that other people can see it and experience it. If it's a project that you're working on, think about the same thing. How are people going to know that the project is happening? How are they going to be able to access the project? And then when it asks how you are involved in your community, um, you can think about this from a very specific kind of way. Like I do community service and in the process of doing my community service, some of what I share is my art. You could talk about how um, my community really exists online and I have a strong following of Instagram followers and that's where I do most of my community work is with my online community. You could talk about how um, you have a circle of friends that you share your work with. It, this question is basically getting at, we don't work in isolation as artists. We work on our stuff and we wanna get it out there. And so what does that process look like for you? Um, another way to answer this question is if you are someone who does tend to work in real isolation, um, how might this grant opportunity expand that so that you are getting out in the community more? What is your plan for being more involved with the sort of dialogue of arts in your world? Next slide, please. Defining and measuring success narrative questions. Um, 10 points. This is probably my favorite set of questions because I like to plan and I like to have calendars and I like to build charts and I love to-do lists. So this is kind of my favorite. If you are not someone who likes all of those things, find your friend like me who does love these things and will help you flesh out this part of your grant. So the first question is, what is your plan to make sure you complete this project? And the second question is, how will this grant advance your short and long-term goals as an artist? Um, I would be very specific in answering both of these questions. I would actually, if the grant cycle goes from one date to another date, 
I would plan out benchmarks for each month. I would say in the first month of the grant funding, I'm going to purchase these materials. By the second month of this funding, I want to have two artworks completed. By the third month of this funding, I want to have those two artworks up on my website and I want to have another artwork underway. Like I would go very specifically like with periods of time. This shows that reviewers that you mean business and it also sets up a really great set of benchmarks for yourself so that as you're working on your project, you can keep yourself honest and say, okay, I said I was going to have artworks done by this month. I only got one artwork done. I should probably spend more time in the studio and make sure I get the next artwork done because um, I want to be true to this, this uh, time frame that I've set out for myself. Um, you can write this out as a narrative. You can also um, create a Gantt chart or a schedule for yourself and you can upload it in supplemental materials um, and say in this section, like give a brief description and say, please see supplemental materials for a, an outline of how I plan to complete the project. Now, when it comes to short-term and long-term goals as an artist, um, I would encourage you to start with your long-term goals and then try to work backwards. So if you know that in 10 years, you want to have had this many shows under your belt, then maybe work backwards. What do I have to do in five years in order to set myself up for that success? Um, that's how my brain works. It's a little bit easier for me to think long-term than it is for me to think short-term. Um, and then again, those goals will help you as an artist stay on track and make sure that you're actually completing the work that you want to complete. We all have really great intentions and then the world sort of starts working its way into our brains and we find ourselves getting off track. So if you have a really good set schedule for yourself, then not only is OAC going to be really thrilled at the end of the grant period when you submit your final report, but you're going to be thrilled because you got a ton of work done. All right, next slide. Resource management budget, 10 points. Um, I, and I will just remind you all that the project narrative section, you'll see most of these sections are 10 points. That one was a good solid 30 points. So you really want to dedicate that time and energy to that project narrative. So for resource management, um, this is what Megan mentioned about your line item budget. So how will you spend your grant money, describe your reasoning for these expenses, and then provide a list for how you will use the funds. And this can be a very straightforward list. So I'll show an example here in a minute of um, someone who purchased jewelry supplies and they have each item listed out. They have a one sentence like description of why they need that particular item. And then they have the price. Um, and I would be just as clear as that. So think about it in three sections, the item I want to purchase, a sentence explaining why I want to purchase it, and then the price for that item. Um, if it's a service that you're pur purchasing, like I'm going to work with a marketing company on my artwork, I would list the company's name, the services you plan to contract with them for, and then how much the estimate is for that cost. Um, for an organization, it's the same kind of thing, list the... Um, supplies that you're gonna get or the contractors you're gonna work with and make it very clear and concise. I would also say estimate as little as possible, the more you can get exact numbers in this budget. First of all, the more it will look like you've done your research. And second, it will help you later on when it actually comes time to spend the money to track those expenses. All right, next slide. Required application support materials. Um, so this is the kind of stuff that when I say work ahead, um, this is what I'm talking about. To have this kind of stuff available to you um, in a folder on your computer, or if you're someone who likes um, actual paper documents, to have a little like actual folder on your desk where you slip these support materials in on a regular basis is, is a great habit to get into. Um, if you're someone who likes to use uh, online services, like LinkedIn is a great one. Um, I don't really use LinkedIn as a social networking site. I basically use it as a clearinghouse for me to keep all my resume stuff. So thank you, LinkedIn. That's a great service that you're offering me. Um, there are tons of websites where you can put in your information and they will generate a resume for you. 
Um, a very simple Word document resume is great. If it's just like plain text and very like cleanly formatted, that also works great. Um, there are also some great online services that do design work. Like we use Canva at Art Possible Ohio. Um, they have a free version of it and they have all kinds of great resume templates and you basically go in and type it all in. Um, so keep that resume up to date regularly. If something changes in your life, if you get a new job, if you get a new exhibition opportunity, if you receive a grant, sort of always have it in the back of your mind, gotta update that resume. Um, the more you just work on it constantly, the less you'll get to the point where you're like, oh, I have to upload a resume. Oh, the last thing I have on here is from five years ago. And then you're scrambling. Um, biography and artist statement. This is for professional applicants. So if you're an emerging applicant and you're not quite sure what your artist statement is yet, if you haven't quite gotten to that point, then that's fine. It's still good to practice. It's still good to try to have one up there. If you're a professional applicant, an artist statement or several artist statements are something you should sort of have in your back pocket. I don't have just one artist statement. I have a few that I cycle through depending on what kind of thing I'm applying for. So think of it almost like a cover letter to go with your resume. Um, it should be tailored to the opportunity and it should explain how your particular artwork and um, or the project that you're working on is suited to the grant funds and how the grant funds are gonna support your artwork. So spend a little time on that. Um, it's always good to have a couple different versions of your artist statement. Um, work samples, this is something we can help you with. Um, these should be JPEGs if you're a visual artist, video files, audio files. Again, keep this stuff up to date. Don't try a week before the deadline to contact a photographer to then do all of your sample work for you. Um, it's always good to have a friend who's a photographer who can maybe trade skills with you. They photograph your artwork and maybe you help them out with something else. Um, another tip for the artist on a budget, this is something that I do. I have a flat bed scanner at my house that is attached to my printer. And sometimes I will just straight up put smaller artworks on the scanner and scan them in at a high resolution and then crop them down and use those as my work samples. Letters of support, again, work ahead. If you just finished a class or you just have finished a job or you have a colleague that is supportive of your work, don't be afraid to ask them for a letter of support. One of the first things I say to all of my interns and my employees is never feel um, shy to ask me for a letter of support. Um, we are always hustling in the arts. And so anytime we can help each other out, that is the thing to do. So people, um, you should never feel shy about asking for those letters. And then other materials if applicable. If you've had an exhibition recently, maybe upload a postcard. If you've been featured in a news article, upload a copy of that news article. Um, if you have links that you want the grant reviewers to look at, like a link to your website, um, a link to a blog post, um, you can put in a Word document that lists those links with a little description after each one. So any other materials that are going to give the reviewers a more full understanding of who you are as an artist, that's where you would want to plug those things. Um, also, if you have a schedule, like I mentioned before, that would be a good place to put other materials. Um, next slide, please. And here are some examples of potential projects. This grant is great because you can get stuff. Um, Megan always says that, and I love it when she says it. So you could apply to get a new camera if you're a photographer. Here is an example budget of um, someone who wanted to start their Etsy store. And so they applied for shipping materials. They um, applied for jewelry making materials, business cards and logo stickers so that when they were sending out things that they'd sold, they could have a really professional looking product when it got to the person who purchased it. Um, that's huge on Etsy. You really want the thing that you mail out to people to look professional. And so this was her budget. She priced everything out. And um, this was a grant that was funded. So next slide, please. Frequently asked questions. Am I a professional or emerging artist? Um, if you are someone who has had several exhibitions, um, maybe you've made some money selling your art, we would call you a professional. If you are someone who is just starting out in your career, maybe you've had one exhibition, maybe you sold maybe one piece of artwork, then 
maybe you're emerging, but that's really up to you. Um, a lot of artists feel like they're always in a process of emerging. We have one artist that we work with who says that all the time, um, but she has sold a lot of work and exhibited a lot. And so um, I would call her a professional. She would she would be very shy about that. But um, so it's kind of up to you. It's, it's up to you how ready you are to put together a good grant application. Do you think your project is to the $1,000 level? Or maybe you're just kind of like getting started out, want to dip your toes in. And so maybe you're going to try for that $500 level. And then how will these funds impact benefits, taxes, or social security? Um, we get this question a lot, and unfortunately, we cannot answer it because we don't know what your particular situation is. We would encourage that you reach out to someone, maybe like an NHR block. There are also some free services that you can um, check out and get some advice on that um, outside of either OAC or Art Possible Ohio. Um, we're just not going to know the best way to answer that question. Um, we're also not tax professionals, and so thank God because we would be terrible at it. <laughs> um, and then do I need to keep documentation and receipts? And I would say this is a resounding yes. The funds that you will receive through this grant are public funds. So people like citizens tax dollars go to support these um, arts projects. And so we want to be really good stewards of the taxpayer's money. And so I would say, keep that documentation, keep the receipts. Even if it's just like when you buy something, you take a picture of it on your phone, um, and then you have a folder on your phone where you have all of your OAC receipts, that's a really great way to do it. Um, that way you're not constantly like fumbling with paper receipts. Paper receipts tend to fade over time. Um, when they ask for your documentation, they're gonna ask for it digitally. So um, I would highly recommend scanning or photographing all of those receipts and then just, again, keep up on it consistently. All right, I believe that's my last slide. Yay, thank you guys so much for hanging in there with me. All right. <clears throat> thank you, Megan. Thank you, Molly. All right, so let's proceed with our next portion. Next, we will jump into on how to apply to the ADAP program if you would like to apply on your own. So here are the steps you need to take. Next slide. We're going to revisit the OAC home screen, which is oac.ohio.gov. On the screen, we are showing the same screen as before. We're gonna go back under the Grants tab and at the top, select the RD Login button. You can also directly find RD, the RD website by visiting ohioartscouncil.smartsimple.com and that website is listed below here. Next slide. If you are a returning user, you can enter your email and password here. In the image, we are showing the login screen for the RD system. Below, we are highlighting with the blue arrow on where to go to register under where it says um, new to the system. Next slide. If you are new to RD, you will need to register a profile. Um, register as an organization or individual. On the screen, we are showing what that looks like. It has two large buttons under registration options. For purposes of this webinar, we're going to register as an individual. Enter your personal information, all that fun stuff, your name, email, uh, address, phone number, and all that inf good information. Once you've registered, you'll come to, uh, or if you've come back at a later time, you'll land on the Welcome to RD home screen. On the screen, we are showing the RD home screen. There was a yellow banner at the top and there are several different icons for returning users, new applications, password and profile settings. All right, now you're ready to begin a new application. Please note there are two places for that button. Uh, on the next screen, you'll see the list of the grant uh, opportunities. We are displaying a secondary image on the screen right now, which is showing the funding opportunities, program, deadline, guidelines, and, and program overview. And then two uh, blue apply buttons indicated with blue other blue arrows. You'll select uh, the ADAP on the ADAP line. Uh, notice you can also locate those uh, PDF guidelines there too. 
The first th uh, two things you're going to notice uh, is the instructions and application information tabs. On the screen, we are displaying what, uh, what a new application screen looks like. Before you can advance, you'll need to enter as an emerging artist or as a professional artist, indicated with the blue arrow. Your application will be assigned an application number. So please take note of that number for future reference. Add a project title, such as studio equipment, book publishing, book publishing uh, Chaz's play production, or local community festival, or Chaz's solo exhibition. Give your project a title. In the narrative, in the tab titled narrative, you will enter the information we just previously covered. Below in the narrative tab, you'll notice that there are five text boxes. In the next two slides, we will show what those text boxes actually look like. They are individually titled summary, project quality. And on the next screen, we have three more. We are displaying the text boxes here titled Community Engagement, Defining and Measuring Success, and Resource Management. We encourage you to um, write your narrative like in a different program, like a Word document. That way you can just copy and paste your information into those fields. You can type and edit offline. You know, you don't have to be in the system but because sometimes it can be difficult or intimidating just to start from scratch in, in, the, uh, in the RD system like this. We often get asked like, where are the questions? You know, I see the criteria, but what are they asking? And I think Molly covered a little bit of this. We encourage you to open and explore the RD system. <clears throat> you can open an application and just get familiar with the system, especially if you're a new applicant. Anyway, in each one of those boxes, text boxes, the questions are listed for each of the criteria. In the next tab, uh, to the right of the narrative tab, you will upload your support materials. On the screen, we are showing uh, two screenshots of the support materials page. Basically, it's the checklist we just covered, uh, listing examples of your artwork, letters of support, artist bio, resume, and if applicable, you know, other materials that we've covered previously. In the next slide, please be aware of the saved, save draft button. You can save your in-progress application and return at a later time. You can check for errors. You can request feedback on your application. And at any point, you can reach out to us via email or phone to review your application before you submit it. On the screen, we are showing four blue buttons with blue arrows that you can see at the bottom of your screen in the RD system. Thank you. All right, next screen. All right. I know our friends at Art Possible have already covered some of this material, but we would like to remind everybody, you know, what makes a strong application. On the screen, we are showing um, a, a testimonial from a applicant, uh, ADAP app, uh, recipient from Don Thompson who had an exhibition at the Bowen House. And uh, she kind of made a photo collage of all her artworks and uh, people gathering at the exhibition uh, looked like a great time. Uh, she also has a written testimonial in the middle of the screen. But um, from our experience, the most important points panelists look for are clearly stated project goals. Specifically state what you want or need the funding for. Provide a service to the community. Panelists love hearing about how you plan to involve other community members in your project. A well-defined budget and timeline. Panelists really want to know how you planned out your project and how you will spend those funds. Quality documentation of artwork examples. Photos of your artwork are clear and the support materials are current and are well organized. All right, next slide. In the last tab, in the preview submit tab, you can pre uh, preview your application before you submit it. That way you can get a clearer view of what the application looks like as a whole uh, before you submit. 
We are showing on what the screen looks like uh, via a screenshot. We are indicating with blue arrows, the preview button, the submit tab, the blue preview button and the, the confirmation checkbox. Next slide. And congratulations, you've just submitted an ADAP application. Yay. <laughs> what happens next? <clears throat> so the next deadline is May 1st, but once you submit your application, we wanna know what happens next, right? The next part is the panel process. <clears throat> I'm gonna read a little bit here. Panelists um, are a panel of arts and cultural arts professionals educators, artists, and other community members evaluate and score ADAP grant applications. Panel meetings are open to the public and audio streamed online, and applicants are actually encouraged to attend or listen online. Visit the calendar on the OAC's grants page for meeting details and instructions for participating. Applicants will be notified when the panel meeting is scheduled. At the panel meeting, panelists will discuss how each application satisfi satisfies the program evaluation criteria. Panelists highlight strengths and weaknesses, discussing all aspects of the application and its support materials. Following the discussion, each panelist enters the final score, and later the OAC staff averages the scores to determine the funding recommendation. The OAC board is the only body authorized to make final funding decisions and to approve the grants. <clears throat> the review process is very competitive and not all applications are funded. Applicants are strongly encouraged to include as much information as possible in their responses to the narrative questions in order to provide panelists with a complete picture of how the grant funding will advance the, art, the artist's pursuits. Please do not be discouraged if you do not get selected for a grant. We encourage you to try again at the next deadline. If you're not able to attend the virtual meetings, Kathy and I are happy to share the comments with you. You just need to request them. And you can do that just by emailing or calling us. And as Molly mentioned a little bit ago, you know these comments can really help you write future grants. Reminder, we are here to help. So don't be shy. Kathy and I are here uh, open for questions via email or phone anytime. Um, my phone number is listed here and emails as well. And you can see a picture of Kathy and I uh, working and reviewing grants in the office here. And at this point, I'll take, just tell you a little bit about what happens after you receive an award, just very briefly. If you are awarded, you will enter into a legal binding agreement uh, with the state of Ohio. Upon receiving formal announcement of your award via email, you will, you will accept an electronic grant agreement in the ARDI system. You must submit a final report once your activity is complete, but do not worry. We're here to guide you through that process and get your funds to you so you can start making your art. All right. So next comes, um, I would like to tell you a little bit more about some other OAC opportunities that we offer here at the Ohio Arts Council. The first opportunity I would like to tell you about is the Individual Excellence Awards. This is for recognizing our artistic achievement in Ohio. Deadline is September 1st annually and the disciplines alternate. So in even years we offer uh, uh, awards in music, choreography, literary arts, and in the odd years are visual arts. So this year is a visual arts year. So mark your calendars, September 1st deadline for the Individual Excellence Awards. This is a $5,000 grant, which is awarded through an open panel review process focused on the basis of exceptional merit in the artist's past body of work. So there's no future project uh, required in that application. You can apply for an excellence award even if you receive an ADAP grant this year. So that's great. Pardon me. The next opportunity I'd like to tell you about is our traditional arts apprenticeship. The TAA program supports preserving cultural heritage through collaboration. 
And on the right, we have a testimonial uh, from a TAA program applicant or an awardee. The image shows a photo collage of a um, middle-aged Asian woman surrounded by people performing an instrument on stage. And uh, she has a little testimonial there in the middle by Wai Chi Li. So if you are considered to be a master artist in a folk or traditional craft, you can take on an apprentice and pass that knowledge on to that apprentice. Or if you know someone who is a master in a folk or traditional craft, you can be an apprentice with that person and learn a new skill. Masters can be awarded up to $4,000 to facilitate those lessons. All right. And the last OAC opportunity I wanna tell you about is the Ohio Artist Registry. The Ohio Artist Registry is a free virtual platform for artists who want to share their work, connect with the creative community and, and establish an online presence. On the screen, we are showing the OAC, uh, the OAC homepage again and highlighting the resources tab. We are indicating with the blue arrow where the Ohio Artist, Rate, Ohio Artist Registry is in that drop down menu. This registry provides artists with their uh, with opportunities to share their work with clients, galleries, patrons, uh, patrons, and other audiences. You can also um, visit that registry uh, by going to oac.ohio.gov slash resources slash registry. That website is listed below there. So how do you get started in the registry? Um, on the screen, we are showing what that registry screen looks like in its home screen. You can search by uh, from you can search by uh, artist by last name. You can also see like a headshot and some of their art examples. And you can also read their bio and artist statement. But once you uh, select an artist, you can also look through their portfolios and other social media links. So if you would like to promote your art on this web page, you need to register an account. And we are highlighting that with the blue uh, button uh, arrow there. Once you register and it's approved, you can submit your artwork and for all other artists and all other people to see. All right, next tab. And once you have registered in the registry, you can submit work into the Ohio Artist Registry Juried Exhibition. Actually, this exhibition is currently on display at the Columbus Metropolitan Library downtown. Uh, the image we are showing is the image of the current exhibition postcard. And there's a pair of hands uh, throwing clay on a pottery wheel next to a camera um, and with a little bit of text about the information about the uh, exhibition. We offer two $500 Jurors Choice Awards. And we of course love to thank our, thank our partners, friends of the library for assisting us uh, with this exhibition. So please go see it uh, 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 down there at the Columbus Metropolitan Library. So uh, that is all for me. We covered a lot of material today. So we encourage you to reach out to us uh, by email or phone if you have any questions at a later date, uh, or if you're just a little shy to speak up uh, at, at this point. Uh, next, I will turn our, web, our webinar over back to our gracious host, Katie Monahan, um, for our question and answer portion of the program. Thank you. Right. Thanks, Chaz, and thank you to Molly and Megan. That was a lot of really great information, especially when it comes to answering those questions, how to approach the application. And we are very lucky that Chaz, Molly, Megan, and Kathy are all here to help if you have any questions. Um, it, speaking of questions, if you do have questions, I know we've gone a little bit over, but if anyone has questions, we're willing to stick around for a little bit longer. If you wanna enter those in the Q&A box there in your control panel, we'll give you a few, a few minutes here to do that. Um, if you think of a question later, Later, as Chaz mentioned, his and Kathy's contact information is on this blue screen here. Um, so Kathy Signorino, again, uh, Kathy, K-A-T-H-Y dot Signorino, S-I-G-N-O-R-I-N-O -I -I at oac.ohio.gov. And Kathy's phone number is 614-728-6140. And of course, Chaz, who you've seen today, um, is Chaz O'Neill at oac.ohio.gov. So that's C-H-A-Z dot O-N-E-I-L at oac.ohio.gov. And his phone number is 614-728-4421. 
And it doesn't look like we have any questions. You all were very thorough. Thank you so much for taking the time to present. And um, thank you to everyone who took the time to tune in today. Um, we will be sending out a copy of the recording, hopefully by tomorrow afternoon. So if you missed any portion of today's webinar or you wanna share it with a friend, uh, we will be able to share that with you very soon. Uh, that does it for today. Thank you again to everyone and we will see you next time. Have a wonderful rest of your week. Thank you.